Hey guys, welcome to Bar Z. My name's Stan. And today we're going to talk about the first video that just went out. Uh, it was a uh, uh, measuring and setting up a taper. Now, I started out, I verified the, uh, the taper on the machine. It was three inches per foot. Um, perfectly fine with all, everything I did there. I brought it over to the bench. I used uh, the engineer's black book. But instead of going, taking it over to a uh, angle and converting that uh, taper per foot or the taper per inch into an angle, I took it straight to the sign bar, which turns out it's the wrong thing to do. Uh, you know, it, I'm going to fess up to my mistakes and there's an error there and it's a very slight error. Uh, but as the angle increases, uh, so does the error. Uh, and I'm going to tell you what, uh, you know, I went back to my old standby is machineries. Uh, the black book only goes in 10 minute increments. So it'll do 7 degrees 10 minutes, 7 degrees 20 minutes, 7 degrees 30 minutes, blah blah blah. So uh, the machinery's handbook does minutes and seconds. So the way uh, um, 3 inches per foot equates to 7 degrees, 7 minutes, 30 seconds. Which uh, when you convert that into a decimal, decimal is 7.125 degrees. Now if we uh, if we do the sign work on that and go ahead and go to the uh, trigonomic table like we were supposed to do, um, you come up with a point, uh, one two, point one two four, uh, oh is the sign of, of this angle right here. So the, these two angles are the same, these two here. Uh, so that's your sign uh, times a five inch sign bar uh, comes up to uh, 620.6201. Now my original calculation, this is the paper I actually had the other day. My original calculation, all I did was take uh, my, if I took this uh, center line, put a center line through this right here, basically cut this whole thing in half which was uh, 125, and I just took 125 and multiplied it by 5, which is absolutely the wrong thing to do, and I came up with 6250. So 0.6250, um, there's 5,000 students uh, there in my gauge block stack. So at a small angle, it's not huge, but you get on those steep angles and you're going to be cussing at me because uh, your tapers aren't going to fit. So uh, I've, already sh I've already shot all the video. Uh, I've already made all the corrections. Uh, I'm just doing this as an addendum to add to the video to let you guys know uh, that this correction was made. Um, and the, the error, like I say, isn't huge. Uh, and my taper fits, everything's, everything's fine now. Uh, but uh, this is a good book for quick reference. But I swear, this is, this is the Bible. You need to go back to this. And uh, I should have followed procedure and just done it the way I've always done it. But I uh, took a shortcut, so not great. All right, guys, uh, enjoy the rest of the show. Uh, we're going to cut the blank. Um, I've already made the correction. The whole video is all shot with the corrected uh, angles and stuff. And we're going to go through uh, actually cutting and making that taper. All right, enjoy the rest of the show. Now what I want to do is get in here and dress up, I just, I've got my 60 degree center chucked up in the three jaw and I want to dress up the point because every time you put it in and take it out it, it lands differently. So I need to adjust this, you know typically I just swing the compound over and do it but I've spent all that time getting the compound set and I don't want to disturb it. So uh, I'm just going to grab a, uh, uh, a square and I might have to move you guys a little bit here. There you go and we're just going to come into the chuck right here and bump this square into the chuck and then rotate our tool post 
um, you know, until our our uh, tip, um, to our carbide lines up with that square. Okay, we're happy. We're locked. We're gonna make get in here, make sure everything clears, and we're just dressing up the tip. I'm not doing a full form, but uh, you can you can see the run out on that little on that little pecker wood there. I do need to raise my tool slightly. Get myself up on center here. Alright. We're good. Let's uh let's spin it up and go form that thing. Plenty of center to work with there, and we cleaned up all the way around, so we're we're, we're good. Uh, I encourage everybody to make your make themselves a little center sacrificial. That's just a piece of junk 1018. Uh, after you've carved it away so many times, throw it out, and make yourself a new one. Okay, let's get this thing up on centers. Okay, so we've got our blank cut. These are, these are going to end up being uh, just a shade under three quarter because remember we're tapering down to three quarter on the small end of the taper. This is our taper portion. This is slightly over an inch. These are slightly over three quarter. Uh, I've just made these an inch each and whatever the center is is whatever it is. So uh, this, is a, this is a piece of drop off uh, 4130 shafting and uh, our compound set and we still need to drive this thing. We got a center. We got the center trued. Uh, I have a drive pin that I put in here. This is a, actually a pretty simple rig to make. So you tighten your drive pin. This is just a shoulder bolt that's been cut down and trimmed. And then we've got a drive dog. And we can drive this from either end. Remember we're on center so we can flip and move the dog to either end. Um, so your drive would just go in like this. Uh, tighten here. And snug up your tail stock without destroying what's going on with the camera. Ha! Let's get you on the compound. How's that? All right. So now we're uh, we are driven. So now we can uh, cut our taper with our compound here. So let's uh, let's get going on it, and we'll take it down to to this diameter, which we know is over three quarters. So. Uh, We'll at least get the taper started, and then we'll think about uh, some final uh, truing it up and stuff like that. But uh, let's get uh, let's get that taper started. So now the beauty of this is I can pop loose the compound or pop loose the tailstock grab my part and actually go check it in an arbor and see how we're doing over there so I'm gonna go check the fit while we're uh, uh, while I got it out okay so we're getting a little closer uh, we're gonna end up with these down uh, at 5 8 and we've got our taper started and we're just rough cut still on these uh, here's a tip for you if you're using your dog and you've got a nice surface and you don't want to mar it up, just take a penny and uh, kind of kink it in the vise and use that as a cushion uh, so you don't mar up your shaft with your, when you're switching dogs around and working on centers. So that's a, that's a good little cushion for you. But uh, we're going to keep going on it. Um, I've got these within about 10 thousandths uh, of uh, 5 eighths, so they're a little, uh, still a little oversized. I'm going to get in there and start working this uh, uh, taper a little bit more. All right, so that's uh, next. All right, I think we could probably go do a do, go do a bluing fit on this and see how we uh, see how we're doing. 
So uh, let's go do that. Okay, we've got our arbor off the machine. We're still rough cut on the two mandrel sides, but we've got our taper final polished, and I think we're pretty happy with it. We're going to test fit it now, and what we've got, uh, we've got an arbor, and we took some Prussian blue and wiped it down in there with our fingers, and I've still got blue stuff all over me, and it just I can order that stuff on the phone and get it on me. It's just horrible, horrible stuff getting all over my rags and towels. Now the way I intend to use this arbor, I'm going to insert it and you notice I've got no n captured nuts or anything on there. I'm just going to use it uh, much like a uh, you know like a Morse taper where I just tap it in place, just use a rubber mallet, a couple of, a couple of solid hits and that's how it's going to seat. But we're going to pull it right now and check our fit which is actually pretty good. If you know what it looks like down inside of an arbor Maybe I can get you down in there and, and see there's there's two flats with a gap in the middle. So the taper's not continuous. So you're, you're not going to see a constant pattern. You're going to see that break in the middle like we got there. And uh, so, I mean, I'm, I'm really happy with that contact there. So that looks pretty good to me. And uh, after we're dried out, see where the Prussian blue is acting as a release agent. So it, it actually releases from there. It feels good all the way around. You, know, you can spin it and feel your contact and feel it making contact. If it feels jumpy, you know, you've got a high spot or something's eccentric somewhere. Or there's a piece of dirt or grit in there, you know. So, uh, pretty happy there. And uh, let's get it cleaned up and see how she seats. I'm pretty sure a 7 degree angle is going to be pretty much self-locking when I tap it in there. Now, I hadn't planned on any type of a locking nut or anything for this for this setup. So uh, let's get it all cleaned up and see how it uh, how it pressure fits. <clears throat> okay, well we're uh, we're pretty much done with this thing. I've, I'm going to check the taper, and I'm just checking it for uh, how much run out it's got. It's got a couple of tenths of run out, and I keep moving it around different places on the taper. And obviously, when I climb, it's going to. Gauge is going to peg out, so I keep moving it around. Everywhere I go, I got about a one to two tenths tick on it. So the taper's running pretty good. Um, let's go over to the bench and we'll, we'll check these for uh, size, make sure both of the end mandrels are the same size. But uh, that's about as good as I can get with this lathe cut, is a couple tenths. So I'm pretty happy with that. <clears throat> I think that's going to be good enough just for balancing a wheel. I, you know, all, all we're trying to do is find a high spot on the wheel. So let's uh, get it over. Uh, let's get it over on the surface plate and take a look at uh, the the two ends and see how close those are. All right. Well, we're on the comparator stand and we got a couple of V blocks, and I'm just going to take the uh, my mandrel here and seat it in uh, one of these V blocks. Make sure I'm down tight to the table. And I've already kind of set this up. And we're going to find our high spot on the shaft. Okay. Now, actually, I'm I'm not going to flip V blocks because uh, our V blocks could have an, an error in them, and I didn't really check them. I'm just going to flip the part and put it right back in the same V block, and then bring it back in this way. That way, we've eliminated the error of any V blocks. Okay, so we're pretty damn close to the same size on uh, both of these. So I'm pretty happy there. Um, run out's good. I think we got a winner. All we got to do is go uh, check a fit, you know, see how it fits in the mandrel or how the, how this mandrel fits in the, in the arbors. So uh, that's uh, coming up next. Okay, so here's a standard arbor. You can see down in there the the uh, taper doesn't run all the way through. It's there's a void in, in between them, so you're you're actually mounting it in two spots. There's a there's a, a ground spot on the inboard and a ground spot on the outboard, but there's a void in the in the middle where it doesn't get ground. So uh, I mean this arbor is just going to pop in here, and you'll notice I don't really have any 
I didn't make a lock nut or anything like that. I'm going to rely on uh, just uh, we got a little Delrin hammer here. Actually, this is an UHMW hammer. And just give it a little pop. And that should hold us tight. Yeah, that thing ain't coming out. Okay. So it's going to take a little bit of impact. Just like a Morse taper. Pop it in, pop it out. So I think that's a, a pretty good fit. Oh yeah, that's nice. So I can use that for uh, doing my balancing act. Um, let's check it with some Prussian blue. And uh, I've checked it on one of the other arbors, on, on the balancing arbor, but I want to check it on another one here. And time to get my hands all blue and nasty again. We're going to get all the way down to that smallest one. My finger barely fits in there. So I got that one coated. Here, I got this outer one. That's pretty easy. Yuck. All right. Been out slaughtering Smurfs. All right. Um, and I'm wrecking my towel. All right, let's see how, the, how what kind of fit we get here. I'm just going to give it about a quarter turn of rotation. And pop it out. And there you can see our contact. And you can see the void in the middle that I was talking about earlier. So pretty good. And uh, even a little bit of impact, it should get even should get even better. So there's your contact right there. So that's it for the uh, for the mandrel. All I got to do is build the sideboards, and we got us a balancer. Okay, so I thought I'd give it a quick uh, quick tool black. This has been on here for about five minutes. This is kind of the second coat. Uh, you don't have to worry about this stuff uh, too much as far as uh, burning your skin. It'll just kind of like acetone. It'll give you hangnails. It's about the worst thing it's going to do. But when you first handle it, you don't want any of the oil on your skin getting on it. But you can see there, it's giving it a nice, uh, nice blackening. And what this does is it's just kind of an accelerated oxidation process. It just gets the corrosion over with in a controlled fashion and uh, gives it a nice black look and this is by Precision Brand it's a tool black gel, it's about the consistency of navel jelly so we're going to let that sit about another five minutes and uh, then our mandrel is uh, completely finished and we can work on our sideboards or our side loads or whatever you want to call them alright, but that piece is done just got to give it a rinse and an oil okay, it's been about 15 minutes and uh, I rinsed off all the tool black and I do a coat of uh, Prevent. This is the same thing by Precision Brand. You just give it a light rinse. Don't scrub at it because you'll scrub the black off. And then you coat it with oil. And that makes it so the oxygen can't get to the part anymore. <clears throat> but the reaction is still happening underneath the oil. So you don't rub at it or anything. You just spray it down with Prevent and let it sit overnight. Uh, 24 hours or better. And that uh, coating magna something magna magna flight or magnetite or whatever that's coated the outside of the of the tool uh, continues to have a reaction below the oil so the, um, this thing will get a little darker and it'll look really nice tomorrow and the black won't wipe off if I was to wipe it down with a rag right now the rag would get really black because you're, you're actually wiping off the uh, the shell that you've created so you let it sit pickled in oil and let the reaction happen Alright, uh, that's the end of that one.